Hey Squiggles, how are you doing? Hey Nautilus, how are you? <clears throat> Sorry for the late start. <laughs> Do you mind if I had a word with you? Yes. Just want to ask you a couple of questions. What's the matter with you? Can't you see I'm busy? So, you don't like my seeds, eh, pigeons? It's really chucking those seeds at them. It's gotta hurt. Just heading back home, you're a bit tired. Go on, eat this. Excuse me, sir. Can I ask you about Maggie Bird? I don't know any Maggie Bird. Yes, you do. Maggie, the waitress at Tre Bien. Ugh. It's a disgrace, I tell you. An utter disgrace. Uh, disgrace? An innocent young girl revealing herself like that. Healing? You mean her uniform? The youth of today, they don't have any shame. No shame, I tell you. Not one ounce. I should probably put my glasses on. Hope and pray that they don't give me a headache. happened to the old Bushido values of Japan, like honor and modesty. I've decided to auto-update as you joined a stream. Oof. Also, mustering mus, I really like this game as well. Granted, there are a decent... There are four games that I haven't played. Or five, actually, because I haven't played uh, any of Spirit of Justice either. What about me? I'm not wearing anything revealing. Oh, your problem is you lack any sense of grace. Talk about hitting a girl where it hurts. Do you go to Trey Bien a lot? Uh, miserable ex that miserable excuse for a restaurant. Yes, fruit, fruity playground. Garbage they serve and there's not food. Where's the sushi, the tempura, the rice? Tre Bien is a French restaurant, sir. Also, Squiggles. Uh, Ron Delight was, in fact, Mask to Mask. Played every possible Ace Attorney game except for Investigations 2. Fruity playground. Where do you think we are, boy? In Paris? I want real food, not those snooty snacks. What about those shameless girls? You mean the waitresses? You can see all the way up to there. There? Yes, the waitresses. You were there for the for that reveal. Practically naked. It's a disgrace, isn't it? Well, isn't it? Listen, it's not my restaurant. And you're making this out to be a much bigger deal than it actually is. 
It's a miserable excuse for a restaurant, that place. Miserable. He certainly knows the place. He must be irregular. But if he hates it so much, why does he keep going? Are you a regular at that restaurant, sir? It's just, if you dislike it so much, why would you keep going there? Sir? There you are, you f there you are, you filthy pigeons. You want food? Ha! Take that. He must be hiding something, right? <clears throat> if he is, I should be able to see a psych. Wow, psyche walker too. Oh wait, I don't exactly have the Magatama right now, huh? Remember, Nick, that Magatama is only on loan. You'd better find it or else. If Pearls ever gets wind of this, I'm going to be in a world of pain. Oh, there's a magazine here. It's a magazine full of job listings. You disgusting rogue, picking up something that someone else threw away. Threw away? Did you throw this away? You looking for a job? Gah, <laughs> that's none of your business. Sorry, I guess I'll just take the magazine with me then. I don't want anyone else having it. Give it back. Too bad. Now that you want it so bad, I don't want to give it up. Hey, that's mine! Hey, look! Pigeons! Yeah, and heaps of them, too. Did you know that pigeons are a symbol of peace? It's a dove, not a pigeon. I thought that doves and pigeons were the same type of bird. Poor things. And so they can't be symbols of peace and harmony just because- er, peace and harmony just because they're gray? Is that it? You're overthinking this one by just a smidge, Maya. Fun fact, the, uh, the one white, the one dove here is actually supposed to be a, it's like kind of a reference to Turnabout Big Top. As stated by the, as stated by the, uh, creator of the series. I used to love sandboxes like you wouldn't believe. Really? You? And sure, finding iron fillings in the sand with a magnet was my favorite thing to do. Iron fillings? Wow, that's too exciting for words. It was my ambition to collect every single shirt of iron in the sandbox. I was such a kid back then. So, did you manage to get all the iron? No, I never did. I think I came close, though. Come to think of it, I still have all the iron fillings I found way back then. You want them? No. And this place is so fruity. <laughs> Screenshots taken out of context. <laughs> it's not a bad thing. Besides, I love apples. They're among my favorites. Then that apple slide is perfect for you. What's so perfect about it? Oh, come on. Don't be a stick in the mud. Slide down it a few times. Go on, woo! No way. I'd get covered in sand if I slip down that slide. Anyone can see that. Yeah, you're right. Otherwise, I'd give it a try, too. Looking at this orange reminds me... What? That you're supposed to eat a lot of them to ward off colds in the winter. You can't have fun during the holidays if you're sick in bed, you know? You don't have to tell me twice. Are you prepared for me to butcher more French? Mademoiselle! Y yes Are you looking for the job? What? N no no, I was just... Let me see. Your style is... I'm so bad at reading French. I don't know the language and I don't know how to pronounce certain syllables. <laughs> I have no clue how to pronounce P-E-U. Your style is... 
it's Un or Un. I don't know. Fucking different. But you have a good face. Different. Felicitations! You have passed. I will. I will hire you. God. I thought. <laughs> I thought that when I did the shitty French accent, or the shitty attempt at a French accent yesterday, that I wouldn't be embarrassed of it coming in today, but god, it's it's coming back full force. Bien, come with me. I will teach you everything I know. N Nick, help! I don't know whether to laugh or feel bad for Maya. Maybe I should do both? Pretty cold out there on the streets. Peaceful, though. It's nice that people can take it easy after the holiday rush. Mr. Armstrong must be a pretty big neat freak. He already has the table ready to go. Now, if only the food in this place was edible. This must be the table where the poisoning occurred. The, stains, the stain tells the story well. The whole area is still cordoned off with police tape. This must still be under investigation. Also, can I just say, looking at Trebian, this place very heavily looks like a spot that I would, um... It looks like a spot that I would build in Animal Crossing. Looks like they have Maggie in questioning. Guess I've asked her pretty much everything. I'll come back if there's anything else I need to ask her later. Well, you found the evidence yet? <laughs> the one that's gonna find her innocent? Um, no, not yet. We've only just started our investigation. Well, whatever you need to know, I'll give you the dirt on it. I'm putting off all my other cases for now, pal. Yeah, she's really fired up about this. Oh, yeah. One more thing. Retrial's been approved. We're sitting at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Gadeau's gonna be the prosecutor. Oh. Listen up, pal. Maggie's found guilty again. Yes? Uh, I'll... Make sure you get locked up good for it, got it? So the guilty party was Maggie Bird, huh? Yeah. Back when she was on the police force, you were her mentor when she was a rookie, right? Yeah. Kept a close eye on her. I, I mean, not too close, you know? Hey, what's with the funny looks, pal? It was just her. It wasn't anything like. Look, sure, I was her boss when she was doing her training. That was it. Nothing happened. I'm sure sure is sweating up a storm over nothing. Ah, so that's it. Our big old gumshoe has a little old crush on Maggie. I don't like her or anything. I, I was. Ugh. Not to self. Gossip with Maya about this later. Look, pal, don't tell anyone, okay? Gotta keep it a secret, got it? Sh sure <clears throat> now, Would you mind not th guessing what I'm thinking all the time? Hey, not your face, pal, not me. You have to be blind not to see what's on your mind. So I was wondering, did you fill me in on the victim? Glenn Elk. He was a computer programmer. I see. A programmer. He's just regular Joe working for a small-time computer firm. Maggie never had any contact with the guy before that guy. Alright. Before that day, well. But all she did was take him his coffee on the day of the murder, pal. Yeah. Maggie also claimed to have never seen the guy before. Did the victim go to the restaurant often? Not according to the chief. That it was the first time he'd seen the guy. Programmer. And a first time customer at that. What possible reason could Maggie have had to kill a guy like that? That's what I thought. But the motive was still somehow established in her trial. You're kidding. What was her supposed motive? 
Sorry, pal. I'm real busy. I haven't even got enough time to sift through these papers. You can do it yourself, okay? Look at this motive have been. This isn't really a proper investigation. I'm kind of working on it by myself. Uh, oh, that's right. The judge already ruled on the case, and all the evidence is... Er, and all the evidence is in already. The only problem is with Maggie's testimony. Yeah, doesn't sound very good for us, huh? Look, pal, I got a mountain of papers on this case to look over before tomorrow. So I'm just gonna say this. Maggie Bird's no liar. She's... she's... Okay, so she's a bit out there. And a bit off base sometimes. But she's a good cop. It's not exactly complimentary, you know? So what do you think really happened? Just how contradictory is her testimony? The biggest problem with Nagi's testimony is the number of people at the table. Yeah, my thoughts exactly. Nagi still insists there was another guy sitting with the victim. Right. Get this. Everyone else in the place says the guy was alone. Even the chief. And then there's that CD. CD. Oh yeah, she did mention something about a CD. And there was a sample CD on the table, sir. Our guys turned that place upside down. There's no CD. What? Not on the table, not anywhere in the whole restaurant, pal. But didn't Maggie say the victim was wearing an earpiece, too? Yeah. That was for the portable radio in the front pocket of his hoodie. He was scanning for different people's power levels. Radio? He didn't have a CD player? He got it. Careful, he never explained that contradiction at all. Come to think of it, the owner of Trey Bien didn't mention that CD either. I don't know why, but I get the feeling that Mr. Armstrong's got something to hide. Chef of Trey Brienne, huh? You know what that chef said to me? La la la, your body's full of little toxins. And then he gave me this bottle. What's in it? I don't know. The label says Juniper. I'm under orders to put a few drops of it in my bath every day. Under orders? Yeah, you know? Something about that lady. I mean, guy. Huh? Can't stop thinking about him? I like that, pal. Give me a break. He's not my type. Bye, Gumshoe. Man, I can't stop thinking that he's involved with this case somehow. Sounds like he knows a little something more about our charming chef. Sorry, give me a sec. Sorry about that. So what exactly is it that caught your attention about the chef at Trey Bien? It's, a uh, kinda hard to say. Guy's probably not even connected with the case anyway. Hey, come on, detective. Didn't you say you'd give me the dirt on anything? Well, this sort of stuff is kinda unimportant. Gossipy stuff, you know, pal? Look, how about this? Go to Trey Bien and investigate the place yourself. And if you find out anything suspicious about the guy, you report back to me, okay? Um, I don't suppose I'll get a choice in this, huh? So I'd better find out more about the chef at Trey Bien than report back to Gumshoe. Poor Maya. Looks like Mr. Armstrong's really taking a shine to her. I suppose I'll just have to let her work at the restaurant for a while. I'll go pick her up from Trey Bien once things have cooled down. Why do I have to move to the... <laughs> to the detention center to be able to move to Trey Bien? 
Really? Um, excuse me, sir. Could I ask you about this? Huh. Sir? Here you go, boy. I was some pigeon feet. Pigeon feet sound to you. This wasn't exactly what I was hoping to get out of this guy. I'm a lawyer. Nothing. Maybe I need to present something to, uh, Gumshoe. What's that? Sports paper? Yeah. Found it in the magazine rack at Trey Bien. Stated the same day as the murder. You may be onto something here. Take a look at this. See this writing here? MC Bomber. Hey. What is it? I've heard that name somewhere before. Yeah, MC Bomber. Wow. He actually seems to be thinking for once. Ugh, it's no good. Can't remember. And he goes back to being the gumshoe we all know and love. Hey, pal. I'm gonna borrow this paper for a bit, okay? I wanna get a handwriting analysis done on the scribble. Handwriting, huh? It'd be good to know more about that in any case. Thanks, pal. I bet this will turn out to be an interesting clue. I wonder if that's what I needed to do. Maya, I'm coming to save you. The sense of flower sure is strong. It almost makes me dizzy. Oh, um, hello? Who was that just now? A customer? She had a sort of dark aura about her. Ah, welcome. B Avenue. Wow, what a cute voice. Oh, it's just you, Nick. M Maya! Well, how do I look? You should quit being a spirit medium. Maybe, but it's kind of boring being a waitress. I mean, you're my first ever customer. It was that woman I just saw. Oh, oh! And since you're here, you might as well have something to eat. I am kind of hungry, actually. So, how do you like your new job, Maya? I never knew there was so much for a waitress to do. Take people's orders, bring them their food, make coffee, work cash register. Of course, we need a customer before I can do any of that. Yeah, it's a nice looking restaurant. It's a shame more people don't come. Don't forget about the ultra cute waitress. Check out my gimme a tip smile. Hey, Nick, why don't you order something? The chef's preparing a tasty lunch set at the moment, or so he says. How much is it? It's the twin tea set, so it's twenty dollars, of course. Twin tea set? I believe I'll be taking a pass on that. That's uh, kind of expensive. What? But you can't. Come on, Nick, it's not every day I get to be a waitress. I want to try carrying plates and working the cash register. About cleaning the toilets, that should keep you busy. Yeah, right. Maybe later. Um, about the lunch. Oh, a fine choice, sir. No, I, um... Kitchen, lunch special, please. With all the extras, drink, side salad, dessert, and gift. I don't need any of that. Just a moment, please, sir. playing Nocturne right now, so your attention's spotty. I wish you luck with your Nocturne gaming.
is really getting into this. So how much is this set lunch then? Twenty dollars, huh? With the drink, side salad, and dessert, it's forty-five dollars. Hey, wait a sec, Maya. I'm sorry to keep you waiting, sir. Here you are, our deluxe fortified lunch set. Oh. A dish inspired by lobster and abalone fricasse with a balsamic vinaigrette. Bon appetit! Um, thanks. <laughs> Matador. Matador is definitely, uh, fun. Come on, Nick! Hurry up and try it already! Lobster, huh? Alright, down the hatch it goes. Ugh. Well? Are you hungry, Maya? I'm starving! Here, it's yours. Really? You're not supposed to... Don't you... Aren't you usually... Sp like, most of the time when you have lobster, isn't it lobster tails? Remember, Maya, my wallet doesn't print money, so you'd better polish off that plate. I, I just remembered. I've got to clean the toilets. Hey! Can't be in that much of a hurry to clean the toilets. Yeah, my the maid outfit's very cute. Hey, Saint Dreamer, how are you doing? How does that guy manage to make good food taste so bad? Hey, Nick, you- er, hey, Nick, you wanna take a peek at the kitchen? Kitchen, huh? Not a bad idea. Now, what was it that Maggie said again? In the kitchen, you'll get to see all the chef's greatest secrets. In the kitchen? Mm, that sounds tasty. Hey, wait up, Maya! What is it? I'm pretty busy right now. Are you going to show me around? There goes my plan to find some cool clue and show it off in your face. Better conduct the search in the kitchen myself. And here it is, the famous Trebien Kitchen. It's my first time in here too, actually. Weird atmosphere in here, that's for sure. Mr. Armstrong will be back soon, so we'd better search quickly. Chop chop! What's this? Looks like a treasure chest or something. Wow! Look at all these little bottles! Oh, they're aromatherapy oils. It's got so many, they're overflowing onto the floor. Let's see... 1, 2, 3... 98, 99, 100. They're all the same, too. Hey, wait a minute. What is it? There's one bottle that's different from all the others. Well, what do you know? It doesn't have a label, either. And... It doesn't smell. So what's that liquid inside, then, I wonder? Hey, Nick. We should borrow this. I mean, look how many bottles he's got. He won't miss one, will he? Now this is one large mirror. Hey, Sachi, how are you doing? I bet this is where he makes himself look pretty. It's a book on the dresser. Maurice Armstrong's Bedtime Literature. Not exactly Pulitzer Prize material, is it? Looks like a collection of poems he's written. Poems? Cool, read one out. And say it in your best French accent, with intensity, okay? Hey, um, here's one. <clears throat> it's called Printemps. Kinda tired from PAX and editing a huge VOD. Mm. Is it two of them? Er, the two of them, like actors from a film. The coffee's still undrunk. Sweet nothing's over too soon. On that sad Sunday morning, the foolish cocktail is so delicious. Take the last sip of your tea, and I know what I will do. 
I must lie to you. I must. Printemps is spring, you think? Huh? That's it. Yep, that's a poem for you. What are these lace curtains for? I don't know, but they give the place a real homey feel, don't they? Mmm, lace curtains. You know, if I was a cooking pot, I'd be perfectly happy to sit on a shelf under those. How do you respond to something like that? Those lace curtains would get really grungy really fast. Like, I can guarantee you that. Mm, that smells good. And something's bubbling away nicely in that pot. It must be the lobster and abalone fricasse with balsamic vinaigrette. Yes, Archie? Isn't that what I just ate for lunch? Maybe. What you ate is the only French dish I know the name of. Now I know I'm in a French restaurant. I've never heard of most of these seasonings. Did you miss something last stream? Uh, Ron Delight. Why is my uh, maid? Uh, we're on the next case, Sachi. You, you missed the end of the stolen turnabout. Now, er, now I know I'm in a French restaurant. I've never heard of most of these seasonings. Hey, Nick, this container has oyster sauce? What's that? Is that used in Chinese food? Uh, look! Right there on the counter! My Magatama! What's it doing there? So was it the wife? No, it was not. What indeed? Would you would you like me to go into detail about it, Sachi? <laughs> Mm. Yep. Hey, Nick. Oh, wait, what? And look at these knives. They are they look really sharp. Let's see how one of those slices through a cheesecake. A cheesecake? You don't exactly need a sharp knife for one of those, Nick. Uh, Ron Delight was the real Mask to Mask, and Luke at me was nothing more than a murderer and a blackmailer. But, uh, Ron Delight also got off of, uh, all of his crimes as Mask to Mask due to the je due to, uh, Double Jeopardy as a law. Got this. Sorry, Nick. I'm a waitress now. I've got a pile of work waiting for little old me. Luke at me was a murderer? Yeah. He was also not mask to mask. Yes, because Ron Delight was found innocent of being mask to mask, he was legally not allowed to be tried again as Mask to Mask. Yes, Maggie is back. Sachi, this uh, this case is actually was a scrapped case from from Justice for All. Hmm. The old guy's not here anymore. Rat, and I still have some unanswered qu unanswered questions for him. The fuck does it mean found guilty for murder? So the plot the plot set up for this case is that um someone is impersonating Phoenix and got Maggie declared guilty, and we're reinvestigating the case to prove her innocence. Scooter, huh? We'd leave it right in the middle of a park like this. The wheel guard and the light are busted. Guess it must have been an accident. It's 
totally wrecked. Ugh. Wow, Jesus. You really need six text boxes for this, buddy? That was like nine text boxes, actually. Hey, what do you think you're doing with my bike? N no, I was just... Ugh. You've been messing with my new ride? Is that what you've been doing? N new ride? Isn't that kind of an old mo- Ugh, I pay for this. It, it wasn't me. I was just passing by. Hey, there's the one that, c that covered my saddle and crap, huh? gonna pay if you catch my drift. No, wait a sec. I'm not a pigeon, so I couldn't have done it. Wise guy, eh? I gotta be so hard it'll feel like you were smooching the express train. Uh oh. You just better watch your back. This ain't over. I'm gonna round up a group of lawyers, and then you's gonna pay. Um, actually, I'm a lawyer myself. What do you say? Phoenix Wright, attorney at law. <laughs> Phoenix Wright? You saying you Phoenix Wright? Um, yeah, I am. So a wise guy too, huh? Because I'm Phoenix Wright. The one and only. What? Out of my way. Gotta cruise. He's gone. Surely that guy wasn't my phony, was he? wasn't anything like me! Guess I better make a note of the scooter. That's a hobgoblin! <laughs> Fun fact, uh, I can't remember if it's in Dual Destinies or Spirit of Justice, but, um, there, there was some extra, like, dollar DLC that allowed you to swap out the costumes for the 3D models for the, uh, three lawyers in each game. Uh, in one of them, you get his suit as an alternate outfit for Phoenix. And it's great. Ugh, pathetic. Oh, it's you. You threats from a little brat like that. You look like a pigeon that's got seeds in its eyes. You've been here the whole time, then? Listen, that's strawberry. I had something to- I had some thinking to do. I'm like you had some cowering to do. Gumshoe out here like he yells at me and has stupid hair. It has to be him. Are you a regular at that restaurant, sir? It's just that if you dislike it so much, why would you keep going there? Sir? There you are, you filthy pigeons. You want food? Haha, <laughs> take that. I knew it. This old guy's got something to hide. What could it be? I don't know if I have the stuff to crack this open yet. It's time you told me the truth. Why are you a regular at a restaurant that you dislike so much? Isn't it obvious? People only have one reason to go to restaurants, to eat. To eat? Is that the whole truth? What do you mean? I don't think you'd go to that restaurant for the food at all. What's up, brat? How dare you accuse me? What proof have you got? He goes there to buy food for the pigeons. I can tell that... Not... not you, nor anyone else in the world would go to that place for its food. The proof is in the pudding. Or in this case, the lunch menu. As the Twin T said, the food at Tre Bien is terrible, and expensive. You're wrong. It's cheap. Huh? I'm rich. I inherited money when I was a boy. Yes, I'm stinking rich. I've done a lot of work since I was born. Other than feeding the pigeons. What a load of crock. Don't mind me, I definitely didn't misread a load of crock. It tastes another story about the price. It's nothing to me. So you're saying that you go there because you've got money to burn? 
Exactly. I have so much cash, I go for a swim in my money vault every day. Unfortunately, that's a lie. What? You don't have money to burn. You're flat broke. <laughs> He's rich but can't afford a rhinoplasty. <laughs> I think he needs to, like, get it looked at, but he, d he doesn't necessarily need plastic surgery. Maybe he likes his nose like that. This is yours, right? My magazine. Why would a rich retiree be looking for a job? I was... Ugh. So what? So I was looking for a job. I'm buying a lot at the moment. I need spending money. Oh? I don't go to that restaurant for food. I just go for the Javachino. Yeah, I think you mean a cappuccino anyway. Er... Anyway, how much does a cappuccino cost there? Eight dollars. This would better be some golden beans. Clearly Phoenix has never been to a Starbucks. <laughs> Wait, that's what you- Shit, you're right, Sachi. I didn't even put two and two together that you were talking about Buggy the Clown from One Piece. <laughs> he does have the nose. <laughs> What's your problem? You think a poor man would be better off drinking dishwater, do you? Is that it? No, I wasn't thinking that. I was wondering if the coffee there is really that great. No, it's not, but... But anyway, yes, that place has free newspapers to read every day. Newspapers? Exactly. They don't want me hanging around at home, so I go there. I'm sorry, sir. There are no free papers to read at Trey Bien. Shit, Gumshoe stole my, uh, newspaper. I don't think I have enough evidence yet. I should investigate and gather some more clues before I try again. in time. What is it, Detective Gumshoe? Well, I've got back to me about the newspaper you gave me. You must mean the sports paper with the memo scribbled on it. So, what did they say? Did the analysis turn up anything? They said the doodle was written by the victim, Glenn Elk. No doubt about it. I expected as much. I like that they couldn't come up with a pun for Glenn Elg, so they're just like, let's just make his name a palindrome. Is there a pink badger? The victim took the paper with him to the restaurant on the day of the murder. Why are they handcuffed together, Sachi? That's our best interpretation of the facts at the moment. MC Bomber. Also, I just realized I've... I think I might have slipped Gumshoe's voice into Godot's voice. Whoops. I get the feeling I've heard that name somewhere before. Yes. Oh, well. Yes, it'll come back to me. Don't forget to report back to me whenever you find the rest- or whatever, whatever you find in the restaurant, okay, pal? When did I start taking orders from Gumshoe? Although... I did get the- or I get the feeling there's something I need to show him. No matter what, whenever I come here, that mascot's there to greet me. Got that right. It's the Blue Badger. It's my idea. I made it. Now it's the national symbol of the police force. Yeah, it's the blue badger. So what's with the pink one? It's new, right? Yep, need the pink badger. So one's called blue and the other's called pink. But they're both called badger? You got it. They're married. So should I expect to see baby badger next time I'm here? Oh, 
think of as Maggie at the moment. No, I didn't mean it like that. I mean... <laughs> well, you don't have to explain. You got one of those aroma bottles too, huh? Only this one doesn't smell. Huh? I don't get you. This was mixed in with all the other aromatherapy bottles, but it's not the same. It doesn't even look the same. Wouldn't you agree? A cologne bottle that doesn't smell, huh? Sounds like a skunk to me, pal. Why is Gumshoe just, like, vaguely hot? It's because of how scr Like, he has scruffy aesthetic down to a T. Like... He, he's got he's got that scruffy aesthetic that is just like put together so like perfectly well, you know? Look, mind letting me borrow that bottle for a while? I want to send it to the lab for analysis. The victim was poisoned, so the contents of this bottle are pretty important. I had a hunch there was something funny about that chef. You suspect John Armstrong? I got that guy's number. I know what his secret is. It must be the same secret Gumshoe was talking about before. Gumshoe got his phone number. Guess I'd better fill you in on the details. About this Armstrong guy's secret, I mean. So what's Mr. Armstrong's secret? Ever, you ever had a lunch at Trey Bien, pal? Um, yes. So how was it? To put it nicely, it was inedible. Hey, don't worry about being nice around me, pal. You and I both know the reason that place is so empty is because of the food. I mean, the place is clean. He's got a girl like Maggie as a waitress, so... Yeah. Yes, it's probably the food. The real scoop on the guy is he's up to his ears in debt. Really? How much does he owe? This is a copy of his loan contract. He's about half a million in the red. Half a million? Are we talking dollars? Yeah. Hey, if it was Sterling, he'd really be in trouble. Sorry, that figure just took me by surprise. Yeah, this case is full of surprises. I'd be willing to bet that Chef's got something to do with most of them. That's my hunch. Take a look at this. What is it? It's a newspaper I found behind the magazine rack at Trey Bien. So, what of it? This was the only paper there, and it's dated more than one month ago. What? You see what I'm getting at here? The restaurant doesn't get newspapers. This is just one that a customer happened to leave behind. Uh, ugh! Tell me. Why are you so determined to hide the truth? I'm not hiding anything. I'm gonna have to put it, this guy out of his misery. <laughs> Phoenix is just gonna end this man. <laughs> Listen, the real reason why you go so much to Trey Bien is... Take that! What are you asking me about that girl for? She was the waitress at Trey Bien. Ah! Therefore, the answer to the mystery of why an old man would drink expensive coffee at a terrible restaurant is the waitress. Ah! But I don't recognize that face. You're probably telling the truth here because you weren't looking at the girl's face. 
but in her outfit. That's the truth, isn't it? You became a regular at the restaurant because of the waitress's uniform. That uniform is all you can think about, isn't it? Uh, I can't take it. To you, that waitress was your... Enough, please, no more. Stop saying that word. Stop saying waitress. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Um, sir? Yes, it's true. I was there for the young girl. Fine, so I'm a dirty, wicked, sinful old devil. No, no, I didn't mean it like that. Get one of those lousy cups of Javachino every time for eight dollars. All because of the serving girl. Punish me. Lock me up. Really, that's not what I'm here for. I'll be the same. Another twenty years, and you'll understand what it's like. Never mind. He's just horny. You'll know how painful it is to be an old man like me. No, really. Listen, sir. Stop calling me that. I have a name, you know, boy. So show some respect. I'm Victor Kudo. Sorry, Mr. Kudo. You young ones did think you know it all, don't you? Well, I'm not saying another word. I won't tell you anything more. This guy was in the restaurant at the time of the incident. Which means I have to hear his testimony, one way or another. Huh. I don't believe this. I even broke his psyche locks and everything. So I'll have to try to get him when, when he's in a better mood. It's that old man. Is he still feeding the pigeons? Yeah, he fed me as well. Got a bunch of those seeds in my eyes. Oh, ouch. Hey, Maya, would you mind coming with me for a while? Huh? Me? Why? Something I really want to ask that old man. Just take him to Hooters. That's basically what he's treating the restaurant as, isn't it? Sure, okay, I'll just get changed. No, hang on. Can you go like that? I guess. Um, sir? <laughs> you again? Hmm. Well, well. I see. Uh, Nick, his eyes are burning into me. It's okay. I think it's going pretty well. <laughs> huh? Just a little child. Run along and play on the side, or on the slide, all right? Play on the slide? Ugh. So close. Just a little more and he would have spilled. Mm hmm Pigeon. How can we crack this guy? Um, excuse me, please, sir. What? Can't you see I'm feeding the... Pigeon... <laughs> Mia! Well... If you don't mind, sir, I'd really love to talk with you. Yes, yes, yes. Of course, certainly. I'm Victor, Victor Kudo. Even from beyond the grave. Wow. How did the outfit stretch? About the incident. Even the man who died after drinking the Javachino. It's like he's a different person. It was quite a shock. And for me. He was a strange looking boy. The girl who took the uh, the girl took the Javachino over to him, you see. And it was the customer alone. Definitely. He was the only person at the table. And he took one sip of his Javachino and And said something like, "Oh!" and then collapsed, dead. Oh, how terrifying. So good at listening, aren't you? I'll tell you anything, whatever you want to know. <laughs> this family seems to be telling the truth now. It looks like Mr. Kudo didn't see this other man, either. Do you like the food at Trabian? Well, of course. I'm really quite a sophisticated man. 
man. I was a young businessman once, you know? I set up a casino in London. Is that the same? Oh, wait. Is that the same? <laughs> Did a uh, man in a very tall top hat and uh, two boys in blue hats rock up and turn one of your slot machines into a Gatling gun? The devs made this whole case as an excuse to draw, ma uh, to draw Mia in a maid outfit. Yeah. Really? How interesting. Eating food at that restaurant really takes me back to my days in France. What a lovely story. London's in England, not France. Oh, yes, France is wonderful. I'd love to show you around the city sometime. It's too much. Can't take it. I want France. <laughs> that's that's one hundred percent nervous laughter there. Can't believe Mia's laughing at the guy. <sighs> you visit Trebian a lot, don't you? Of course. I mean, yes. I'd like to come and see you there. <laughs> Really? Oh, you flatter me so. The owner would be delighted to welcome you, I'm sure. Be careful of that chef, my dear. Chef? You mean Mr. Armstrong? That's right. The man's an ex-con. He he's an ex-con? Whatever did Mr. Armstrong do? Oh no. Those eyes, I can't take this. He has really got this guy eating out of her hand. He steals things from his customers. From his customers? Gloves, handkerchiefs, little things mainly. He's a pilferer. You be careful around him, my dear. Are you sure about this? Of course, he was arrested for it once. I was there when it happened, having my javachino. He really is a regular. I'll write you a little haiku about it. Haiku? Japanese poem. It'll explain all you need to know about that chef. I keep trying to read chef as chief, and I have to actively, in my brain, correct it to chef, but it trips me. If it takes anything again, you let me know. If it's not too, if it's not too expensive, I'll buy you a replacement. I can do enough for Mia. Okay, Phoenix. That's about as much as I can do to help. Thanks, Mia. We got some really important information thanks to you. Honestly, I can't believe Maya called me for something like this. Maya's just calling Mia, and Mia's just like, Oh god, Maya, what the fuck are you doing? I guess it's about time to wrap up today's investigation. Had enough of being a waitress? Yeah. Plus, no one came to the restaurant. Oh la la, Mademoiselle Maya. No, how can you leave me like this? I I'm sorry. That reminds me. Mr. Armstrong had a Psyche Locker 3, didn't he? You're gonna have to break those. Mr. Armstrong, if you won't mind, but I'd like to have another word with you. Won't you? Of course. I think I pronounced that right. What is happening? I do not like this horrible feeling. I have to know the truth. What happened that day? Law, oh, law. I will confess everything. Just don't hurt me. Huh? That was a new world record. It was a lottery ticket. Wow, that was not your voice. Lottery ticket? The man who died here had, an, had a lottery ticket. Half a million dollars. Half a million? Oui. But after the incident, this ticket. 
He disappeared. Ticket disappeared? This was the motive. The, the, yeah. Is it the persecution gave for Maggie? <sighs> I'm sorry, but like Armstrong's voice, like Armstrong's dialogue, pains me to read. They said that she poisoned a man to get the half a million dollar lottery ticket. I'm sure it pains you all to listen to me do it, or you probably find this hilarious. One of the two. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me about this sooner? My lord... You've, you've been trying to hide inf this information about the lottery ticket from me. And I want to know the reason why. No, monsieur. You doubt me. But I have confessed to everything I know. Mr. Armstrong. A half a million dollar lottery ticket. I think I know who took it. I think the winning ticket was stolen by this person. Mr. Armstrong, I believe there's a very high probability that it was you. Ugh. Wow. It's one piercing scream, even for a man like him. see into getting accused of things. I have no idea how to pronounce that word in the middle. Because the first one is my, I would assume. Or qua. I don't know. My pourquoi moi. Jesus. That was bad. That was really bad. I think that's the worst one yet. Why? You have no evidence. I'm not a mask the mask. <laughs> I'm not the kind of person who steals the property of others. Sorry to disappoint you, Mr. Armstrong, but I have evidence to the contrary. May poor qua. <laughs> May poor qua more. <laughs> yeah. Sorry to disappoint you, Mr. Armstrong, but I have evidence to the contrary. I present to you proof that you've stolen from others in the past. Take that! What is this? A poem? Oh, Monsieur, you know me so well. I adore poems. Please, read it. Put some feeling into it. Convicted before, a wicked man or woman. Repeat offender. It means, but why me? I'm sorry to have to bring it up, Mr. Armstrong. You've been arrested for stealing from your customers before, haven't you? Mon dieu! No idea how to pronounce that. You are a liar! You deny it? Do not like, make the false accusations, s'il vous plaît. So, do you have any proof? I want to see the incontestable proof that I have ever stolen from one of my customers. Take that! Seems old habits die hard, Mr. Armstrong. What is that? This is my Magatama. And I found it in your kitchen. No! Wow, that scream just about broke some windows. Oui, oui. I have a weakness for the, for the little trinkets and the figurines. My end, it just slips out. I cannot stop it. Ugh, that's the worst, Sachi. You've stolen handkerchiefs, gloves, and other things from your customers, right? Oui. It's the truth. I'm just a timid little girl inside, monsieur. Timid little girl. Besides, this time, it was not the small trinket we. It was fifty er, five hundred thousand dollars. Why no? Why would I steal it? I have no need for such money. Really now? 
Oh, Monsieur, what is it? Isn't it true that you're in some pretty serious trouble? That you're in desperate need of a large amount of cash. This restaurant is deep in the red, isn't it? Oh. You have a loan. The tune of half a million dollars. That lottery ticket would have wiped your debts. <clears throat> well, Mr. Armstrong, what do you have to say for yourself now? Uh. Uh. Yeah, to be fair, this guy this guy is kind of like if you, if you were to ask me whether or not this guy is a gay stereotype or a French stereotype, I would say yes. Let me just say that. <laughs> like... <laughs> genuinely. To be fair, other than this, I can't remember another instance of this sort of thing in Ace Attorney. From what I've played. I haven't played all of it, but... Mr. Armstrong. You said that the victim had a winning lottery ticket for half a million dollars. How did you know he had something like that in the first place? The man. He was listening to the radio with his earpiece. Wow. I'm tripping over his dialogue so much that it's, ma it's making it worse than my pronunciation. <laughs> Maggie said something about that, too. The winning number was announced on the news, I think. All of a sudden, he exploded. Yes, half a million, he shouted. The ticket? We. Oui. He had all of his tickets spread out on the table. I... I was so desperately in need of money, so I... Put the poison in his coffee? No, 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 no. Oh no, you naughty man! <laughs> I like that line. I don't know why, there's something really funny about him saying Phoenix is a naughty man. <laughs> I simply upped myself to one of his tickets. What? The victim collapsed, and Maggie passed out. I thought to myself, Pourquoi? Por pourquoi? Pass? He had so many of them. Yeah, but only one of them was the winning ticket, right? How could you do that, Mr. Armstrong? Maggie was arrested because of you. No, this is not true. Why not? I did not take it. The ticket for half a million, I mean. But you just told us you did. You said you took a ticket. My no. My How is this pronounced? It was not. Oh. Who's this? That's enough. Er. That's enough. Huh? Ah! Oh. Mr. Godot. That was a very. That was. Honestly, I commend your voice. That was very similar to mine. Have you been practicing in your off time? What the heck are you doing here? Ugh. This is without a doubt the worst coffee I've ever tasted, Mr. Armstrong. You came in here for coffee? D does this craving for coffee know no bounds? I really want to go get, like, Decent quality coffee. Perhaps Mr. Armstrong stole one of the victim's tickets on the day in question. I am the airhead, no. I'm just, yeah, just a pretty little girl who everyone is laughing at. But in that case, Maggie shouldn't be the only one under suspicion. He had the wrong ticket. What? Mr. Armstrong made off with the winning ticket's pretty neighbor. Also, you know how uh, Squiggles said that... <laughs> you know how Squiggles said that Gumshoe was kind of hot earlier? Godot is just hot. 
And so, the ticket he took was worthless. Not quite. He did win something. A dollar. You see, I'm just a pretty face. Without my- without my looks, I have nothing. So? What happened to the winning ticket, then? The one he meant to steal. Indeed. What did happen to it? I don't like spoiling myself by watching trailers, so... Same. Same, Godot. You'll take Gumshoe over Godot? Yeah, that's fair. We'll just wait and see how the movie turns out tomorrow, won't we? I don't know, there's something about white hair that just gets me. Like, originally, my... My OC, that's like, my self, that was my idea for a PNG tuber model, and I'm still planning on working on that eventually. Um, that character was originally going to have white hair, because I really like the aesthetic of white hair, but I also really like the aesthetic of brown hair. <sighs> Voila! Wait, that is... wait. That is voila, right? I'm not reading that wrong and it's... If it, if it wasn't for the accent market, that would just be how you spell viola. You too. The time to laugh at the pretty air, little airhead. Looks like I won't be needing this note anymore. Looks like we've got a new mystery now. Namely, where did the winning ticket go? Kato is giving Xemnas meets Genji. <laughs> viola is spelled Viola, Maddie. I've got a bad feeling about this. Well, anyway... Can't let Maggie suffer any longer for this. Certainly not again. I like Xemnas. I don't know who you're talking about Genji-wise. Unless you're talking about, like, Overwatch Genji. Because that's the first thing that comes to my mind, but... You are talking about? Gosh, what game do I do after this? Maybe I'll put up a vote. Maybe I'll throw, like... I don't know. Like... Kingdom Hearts 358 over two days. Fucking, like... I don't know, rain code? Something else? <laughs> I have no idea. Oh, I see. I guess I should have expected this. Nobody saw the other guy, huh? But he was there when I took the coffee over, sir. Scout's honor. Maggie. Uh, D Detective Gumshoe! Doing all right? How are you feeling? As if you need to ask either question, sir. Don't let him get you down, Maggie. Don't forget to eat well, okay? Roger. And you? Yes? You better square this case away, got it, pal? Maggie's innocent, you hear? If you screw up, then I'll be doing some squaring away myself. Or I weigh some paperwork for your arrest. I think he's serious. Hey, Detective. You're on our side for once, right? Yep. And so, you'll be able to help Maggie out, right? Really? Can you, sir? Oh, uh, that's not your voice. I went way too high with that. Of course. Got the situation under control. I'm gonna be the first witness on the stand today. If something I say doesn't mesh with the facts, make sure you point it out, alright? Sure. Okay. We're forming a united front today, pal. You get me? 
can't tell you how grateful I am, sir. I've always admired you so much, Detective. I know I can count on you. It looks like it should all go pretty smoothly today, huh? I can only wish. Court is now in session for the trial of Maggie Bird. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Also, I just realized, this is really low. Ugh, bitter. Mr. Um, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor? Ah! What's wrong? Nothing. It's just whenever I addressed you in the previous trial, your response was... Who's talking to me? It was a little, well... Intimidating. No, no, that wasn't me. That was the phony Phoenix. That was Zin Ehop. I see. Our trustworthy Phoenix Wright is back with us now, is he? Our trusty? So, Mr. Cadeau, your opening statement, please. Mr. Trite, whether you're fake or the real deal, we'll find out soon enough through this trial today. But I can already tell you, I'm the real Phoenix Wright. I wasn't questioning whether you are Phoenix Wright or not. I was questioning whether you had studied law or not. That's what I intend to find out. There's no denying it. Behind that mask is a man who really hates me for some reason or another. As everyone is aware, the court has already given its verdict on this case once. Therefore, I won't stand for a relevant testimony during his, this retrial. <laughs> I don't even know how to pronounce that, Sachi. <laughs> Oxen Zip. Is that is that a Phoenix Wright's Organization 13 name? Or will I stand for a simple repetition of the evidence presented last trial? Not planning on repeating anything that phony me said, trust me. Now then, Mr. Gateau, please summon your first witness. Let's start with the formalities, shall we? Name and occupation. Witness, state your name for the court. Huh? Oh, sorry, sir. Name's Police Department Detective. Occupation, Dick Gumshoe. <laughs> Other way around, Detective. Huh? Oh, sorry. Anyway, I'm the officer in charge of this case since yesterday, sir. Since yesterday? Yeah, the guy who was on the initial investigation is tied up with another case now. I hope Gumshoe's really got everything under control. For everyone's sake. I see. So, Detective Gumshoe, would you outline the for the court the basic facts of the case? Yes, sir. The victim's name was Glenn Elk. He was a professional programmer. He was on the payroll of Blue Screens Inc., a local company. <laughs> I don't know about I don't know about y'all, but I would not trust a place called Blue Screens Incorporated with my computer. <laughs> this is the victim's autopsy report. That was more Godot's voice. Ward accepts this in evidence. Here are the floor plans, the restroom. When the incident took place, the victim was sitting right here. Poison coffee was brought over to him by the, um... By the waitress. He does look like a hack jump tech bro. The waitress being the accused. Yeah. died from poisoning almost immediately after he took a sip of the coffee. At the time of the incident, there were two other people in the restaurant. 
Mr. John Armstrong, the owner in chief. A regular by the name of Mr. Victor Kudo. Hmm. It still seems to be a very straightforward case to me. Come, detective. Take up this hammer. And nail the defendant's coffin shut with your own two hands. Now then, Detective Gumshoe, let's have your testimony. Uh, yes, sir. <sighs> Gosh. I'm yawning a lot tonight. When the incident took place, <clears throat> the victim was alone at his table, sir. We understand that the guy, Glenn Eld, was listening to the radio at the time. Traces of poison were found in his coffee cup. Now what we found was potassium cyanide. That stuff really packs a punch. And, uh, looks like Miss Bird might have, well, had some kind of motive. Hmm. Using the dark, aromatic depths of coffee to conceal the poison. Glassy lady. Facts of this case seem to be ironclad. Mr. Wright, I would ask you to begin your cross-examination, but... Yes? Please, no intimidation tricks this time around. Is that understood? I already told you that wasn't me. When the incident took place, the victim was alone at his table, sir. What is it about these people and poisoning? It's kind of a theme in this case, because, uh... Fun fact... Case 4 also has a poisoning. Or it might be case 5. One of the next couple cases has another poisoning in it. Can I stop you for just a minute? Huh? What is it? Did I say something that contradicts the evidence? He's so desperate for that to be true, he's practically crying. Your testimony just now doesn't match the testimony given by Miss Bird. She claims that there was another man at the victim's table. Yeah, that's what she said. The killer wouldn't say that when faced with a homicide conviction. Hey! Sadly, her testimony isn't supported by the owner or the other customer. Isn't that right, Detective Gumshoe? <clears throat> I've lost all the gravel. Yeah, it's true. The two testimonies line up on that. That's... Wow, that's Godot's voice. Whoops. They both said there was no other guy at the table. Hmm. What should I do? Should I press on this point a little harder or not? Eh, leave it. No, I should leave it alone. I've got a bad feeling about where this is going. If you've got a bad feeling about this, then maybe you should leave it alone. I once had a bad feeling that was about to have a bad... that I was about to have a bad feeling. It was really bad. Maybe I should move on to another part of his testimony. Who invested in NFTs? <laughs> Glenn Elg 100% would have. No, Sachi, that's called having an anxiety disorder. <laughs> having a bad feeling that you're going to have a bad feeling. I, unironically, I have genuinely had those kinds of days where it's like, where it's like one of those things where you're, you just feel like something bad is going to happen and it just, completely ruins the rest of your day. It's the worst. Some kind of a motive. Yeah. If you ask me, it's been blown way out of proportion. Objection! You know what my golden rule is, detective? Check out a bad cup of coffee. 
Now let's get another. Godot goes to Haru's coffee shop, 100%. Huh? I don't get it. I'm saying, we can always get another witness on the stand if we have to chuck you out. So stick to the facts, detective. Now then, what was Miss Bird's motive? Come on, Gumshoe. Liz, they said she wanted to steal a lottery ticket. I knew it. That's what we heard yesterday, too. It disappeared from the scene of the crime. And it wasn't just any lottery ticket. It was a winning ticket for half a million. Mr. Armstrong knew about the ticket too, didn't he? But he stole the wrong one. Then is it possible Maggie stole the winning one? What should I do? Should I press on this point a little harder or not? Wait a minute. The mere fact that the lottery ticket disappeared in no way implicates my client. Huh. I have it here in my hand. The very ticket in question. That's the half a million dollar lottery ticket. A female police officer found it when she was conducting a search. Of the defendant. What? Order, order. Huh. She's quite a lucky bird, our little waitress. You will submit that ticket as evidence to the court immediately. I'd better keep an eye on that ticket, the way the judge's voice is quivering. This ticket was presented to the court in the previous trial, too. But it feels heavier now, somehow. Half a million dollars, you say? It's just a scrap of paper. What matters is- <clears throat> What matters is where it was found, Your Honor. It's on Maggie's person, unfortunately. You really think there are any contradiction contradictions in his testimony? To be honest, I don't know. But Gumshoe told us out in the lobby. He said we'd be forming a united front, right? How will we win the case if he doesn't throw us a line? I don't have a whole lot of options right now. All I can do is gather the facts together, I guess. Understand the guy, Glenn Elk, was listening to the radio at the time. Holy. He's listening to his radio, you say? Yeah. He had a portable radio in, radio in his chest pocket. Radio. Maggie told us that too, didn't she? And something about how one of them had some sort of earpiece? What should I do? Should I press on this point a little harder or not? Oh, I should leave it alone. I got a bad feeling where this is going. Potassium cyanide? I've heard of that chemical before. Exactly how strong is this poison, Detective Gumshoe? It's well, this stuff's lethal. Eat too much in your history. How much is too much? The lethal dose is 0.2 grams. That's about enough to finish anyone off. 0.2 grams? How much is that? You know, and you swab your ear of earwax? Yeah, about that much. Earwax, huh? Sounds like something Gumshoe's got an abundance of. <laughs> hmm. Such a small quantity of poison could have been concealed anywhere. Okay. Ow. Sorry, give me a sec. Holy. Listening to his radio, you say? Yeah, a portable radio. Press harder. 
And what was it that the victim was listening to on the radio, Detective Gumshoe? Huh? How should I know? Thanks a lot. We're now one step closer to the middle of nowhere. This isn't going very well, is it? Hmm. Detective, could you perhaps tell us how the about the poison and how it was used? Well, maybe the other witnesses just missed him. Perhaps their view of the victim's table was obscured in some way? Huh. That argument is as weak as the coffee in Trey Bien, right? I have here in my possession a ticket. A ticket? It's more like a photo to me. Yes. One way ticket to Guiltyville. Population that's offended. Photograph taken from near the entrance to the kitchen. This is the scene is witnessed by the chef moments after the poisoning took. Er, this is the scene is witnessed by the che uh, chef moments after the poisoning took place. Correct. I think the court will agree that such a clear view of the scene of the crime. Oh, Mr. Trite, could anyone have overlooked the second person at the table? <sighs> Certainly seems to show the victim's table extremely clearly. You understand that the guy, yep, uh, raises the poison were found in his coffee cup. So traces of the poison were found in the coffee cup and nowhere else? Not sure I get you, pal. Was the poison a liquid, or was it a powder? I put it in layman's terms. I'd say it was a powdery substance. So the poison could have been in anything that was on the table. Sugar, salt, pepper. Objection. Huh. You put salt and pepper in your coffee, Trite? Victim took his coffee, black with no sugar. <sighs> it seems that the poison could have only been in the coffee. What should I do? Should I press on this point a little harder? Yeah. Are you absolutely certain that the victim even drank any of his coffee? Huh? What do you mean? According to this file, the poison was found in the victim's coffee cup. But what proof is there that the victim ever drank any of it? Oh, hey, you're right. That's what I was thinking. In case you were wondering. Last objection was for the detective there. Huh? Me? Oh, hey, you're right. You may be fooling the court, but I'm not falling for it. If you have the time to waste, you have the time to present that piece of evidence. That piece, sir? Yes. That piece. Uh, <laughs> what piece was it again? This. I'd be grateful this coffee is only hot enough to give me first degree burns. Oh, now I remember. Uh, this is the, uh, victim's coffee cup. Yes, victim's cup. Take a good look at the rim. Oh, yes, it's unmistakable. There's clearly a coffee stain on it. Conclusive proof that the victim did drink the poison coffee was in this that was in this cup. The victim gulped down the bitter death that the waitress brought to him. Like this. Ugh. For the record, the only prints on the cup were the hit were the victims and the defendants. I'm sorry these voices are blending together. Gumshoe's voice is very difficult to keep away from Gado's voice. 
Upon further investigation of this cup, we found a certain chemical substance. That's enough. The facts of this case seem overwhelmingly clear to me. The defendant had ample opportunity to commit the crime of which she is charged. Furthermore, it seems beyond reasonable doubt that she did indeed commit this crime. Like an old man, then who knows the score? There's also the matter of the half a million dollar lottery ticket. It alone provides a very credible motive. I mean, for that sum of money, even I might be tempted to bend the rules. I don't mind him. I don't mind an old man who's weak to the siren call of money. Not good, Nick. The evidence against Maggie is starting to pile up fast. Yeah, that's because the port is. Er, wow, that's because the court has ruled guilty once already. I'd say it's about time to wrap up this rep this repeat performance. But one final decisive piece of evidence. He's got more evidence against Maggie. This is the apron the delightful Miss Bird was wearing at the time. Wow, that's not the cleanest ap apron I've seen. That stain looks like... Can't be blood, can it? Huh. It seems the star of our party was a little flustered. And somehow spilled coffee on herself. Coffee? That's not exactly the first thing that caught my eye. Of course, coffee stain isn't the most ex interesting thing about this apron. How the fuck can there be blood? No. There's something else that stands out even more. I don't even know, like... I don't know how cyanide poisoning kills you, so I don't know what the contradiction here is. Something else? I presume you mean? Of course. I'm referring to the pocket. The pocket? The search carried out right after the incident uncovered this. Potassium cyanide. The very poison used by the killer was in her apron pocket. Bottle of poison. Maggie's pocket? Yeah. Maggie's prints were the only ones on it. What? Order, order, order. The court will accept these items into evidence. There's something still bothering me. There's, there's something still bothering me, Mr. Godot. Why have you not explained the bloodstain to the court? Bloodstain? What bloodstain would that be? Don't play games, prosecutor. Blood-colored stain that's smeared all over the apron. That's ridiculous. No one told me anything about a blood stain. You don't need to be told. Just look at it. Well, detective, did the stain really be blood? No way, sir. That's it's just ketchup, sir. Ketchup? Just getting some on her apron while taking some on their breakfast that day. Spoken up a little sooner, Detective Gumshoe. Well, something like that again, and I'll have you drink 17 cups of ketchup, witness. <sighs> Thought everyone knew what it was already. Hmm. I haven't seen anything yet to make me doubt the last ruling I made on this case. Motive, the opportunity, and the supporting evidence. They've all been clearly established. Well tried. Seems you really are a phony after all. <sighs> you only know how to drive a man nuts. Witness, please continue with your testimony. Describe for the court the crime scene and the findings of your investigation there. The crime was reported at 12.25 p.m. That kind of scary old man, sir. Poor Maggie. Her poor Maggie had passed out from the shock. Must have been real tough for her. The victim didn't have any identification on him. But 
figured out who he was pretty quick. Then the investigation went smoothly. When Maggie was searched, we found the lottery ticket and a bottle of poison. That was it. There's nothing else missing from the crime scene. Hmm. You identified the victim and secured your prime suspect. Very good. Last chance to convince the court you're a real lawyer, Trite. Don't count on any more cross-examinations after this one. So let the fun begin. Crime was reported at 12... Yep, by scary old man. Oh, whoops. Wait a sec! Hello? Did I say something dumb again? Let me paraphrase what you just testified to this court. The victim didn't have any form of ID on him. That's basically what you said, yes? Yeah, basically. In that case, how were you able to identify the victim so quickly? Nice. Oh, that. So let down, he's got the whole, the whole sagging so shoulders and puppy do or puppy ice thing going. Wow. There's a prescription bag on the victim's table, along with the wall, along with the lottery ticket. Seems Mr. Glenn Oak visited his doctor before he went to Trey Bien. We got the victim's name from the medical records of the doc who prescribed the, who prescribed the meds. Hmm. That's a reliable enough source for the court. What should I do? Should I leave this alone or ask to hear more? So what sort of medicine was in the bag? Well... Actually, the bag we found was empty. Huh? Yeah, completely empty. It's completely empty. Entering an empty paper, paper bag is evidence. Desperate, are you, Trite? Now, what happened with the investigation after that, Detective? Nothing else missing from the crime scene, but the prescription was missing from the crime scene. Objection! Detective Gumshoe, I think I should point something out to you. There's just one small contradiction in your testimony. Oh, finally. Getting all anxious, just waiting, so hurry up, will you? You testified that nothing else was missing from the crime scene. However, the prescription bag you mentioned was empty. Did the officers recover the medicine from the scene of the crime later? Uh, no, they didn't. The victim was given a prescription right before going to Trey Bien. Where, then, did the medicine disappear to? You? Too cool, pal. Indeed. Due consideration wasn't given to the victim's prescription on the previous trial. Witness, why do you always overlook such vital pieces of evidence? I, uh, I guess that's the most careless thing I've done so far, huh? The victim was killed by poison. And the victim's medicine mysteriously disappeared. The victim's own prescription could have it itself been the le er, could have been the lethal poison itself. Order, order! Well, Mr. Godot, what do you have to say to that? Huh. That's all. What? Read for the court the name of the clinic on the prescription bag, if you will. What's the clinic's name got to do with anything? New Ear... Autolaryngological? I think is how that's pronounced. Auto Laryngological Clinic? New Ear Auto Laryngological 
clinic. <laughs> yeah. Potassium cyanide is not medication. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, just for, it's just for his headache, you know? Actually, no, it's not for, it's not for his headache, it's to help him sleep. <laughs> just what kind of illness was the victim suffering from, Mr. Kato? Hardly an illness, Your Honor. More like a bitter war wound, you could say. A war wound? It did certainly make a headache go away. The day before the incident, Mr. Elg felt found himself in a fight. He took a blow to the side of the head and ruptured his eardrum. And it will most assuredly make all your sleep trouble disappear. Not only that, it'll do such a good job of it that you'll never have trouble sleeping again. <laughs> He ruptured his eardrum? And what on earth was the prescription he was given? It was a cream that was to be applied topically inside his ear canal, not to be ingested. What? It's mentioned in the autopsy report. If you read the fine print, who knows, you might get the best night's sleep ever. Imagine the doctor rocks up to Glen Elg. Glen Elg is like, Hey doc, I, I got punched in the side of the head, and uh, I really need, like, I need medication for my burst eardrum. And the doctor's like, okay, here, give me a second. He writes a prescription for potassium cyanide. <laughs> it's mentioned in the autopsy report if you read the fine print. Found traces of the medication in the victim's left ear. Yes, here it is. In very, very fine print. It seems Mr. Eld correctly applied some of his medication while he's at Trey Bien. Did it make the problem go away? Therefore, it would be absurd to believe that he could have eaten his own medication, or that he would have eaten his medication. <sighs> it seems that this medication is irrelevant to the case after all. No. Nick, if you don't think of something quick, it'll all be over. She's right. I can't get away with any old weak objection. What should I do? Push the medication issue. Only moments ago, Mr. Godot made the following statement. It seems Mr. Elg correctly applied some of his medication while he was at Trey Bien. If that's the case, then why was the medication not found at the scene of the crime? The medication in question was for topical use inside the ear canal. Objection! That doesn't change the fact that it could not be found at the crime scene. However insignificant it may seem, it's a lawyer's duty to pursue the truth. Objection! You know as well as I do, the, the medication is irrelevant. It hardly seems likely that a prescription drug would contain potassium cyanide. It hardly seems likely that the coffee the waitress served would contain it either. But it did. The possibility is undeniable. Ugh. That's enough. Mr. Gato, the detective, the only witness to the, the prosecution wishes to call. Mr. Gato? Uh, I, uh, I got my own witness I'd like to call, sir. It's the old man who was there in the restaurant at the day of the murder. Victor Kudo? The pigeon hater? Very well. The matter of the disappearing medication seems a little more trivial, more than trivial at best. However, it wasn't explored at all in the previous trial. That is something that bothers me. Yay, good job, Nick. Court will adjourn for a ten minute recess. After which, we will hear the prosecution's next witness. Huh. I suppose this means I'll just have to finish you off in my last six cups. Court is adjourned for recess.
Gosh, doing Gumshoe and Godot's voice back to back is winding me pretty badly. You, that was close. Tell me about it. I nearly died in there. That's my line, sir. No, it's my line. I really did... I think I really did die a little bit. I died a little on the inside, Phoenix. Looks like we all nearly died in there. I can't believe Detective Gumshoe. How could he betray us like that? Huh? He said he'd help me. But he totally set me up. I don't think he meant to do that, Maggie. He was backed into a corner. I mean, the guy's gotta do his job, right? It's okay. I know all about lies and betrayal. I've had them my whole life. But it really hurt this time. It felt like someone punched me hard in the stomach. I hate that guy. I don't ever want to see him again. Poor Gumshoe. So the next witness is going to be the old guy from the park, right? Yeah, Mr. Kudo. Lover of waitress outfits and projectile seeds. I bet he's going to be really stubborn. I mean, he's pretty set in his ways, you know? Yeah, he's a big old grouch. Are you going to be able to handle him, Nick? Yeah, I can take whatever he throws at me. And those never-ending bird seeds. Projectile seed, ooh woo. <laughs> Board will now reconvene for the trial of Maggie Bird. Oh. Stream, you good? Did it stutter a bit? Is that what happened, Sachi? Mr. Godot? Oh, next witness, please. Died for a sec, but we're good now. Okay. Prosecution calls the lucky old timer who caught the show over a cup of coffee. Will the witness please take the stand? Occupation, if you don't mind. Name's Victor Kudo. Born and bred in the land of the rising sun. Honor and duty are what make me, mind you. I can be quite emotional at times, too. You don't need to hear about that, Mr. Kudo. Please just tell the court your occupation. My occupation? <laughs> Listen, youngin. How much do you think there is for a kimono... For kimono embroidery here? How much call do you think there is? Kimono embroidery? That's what I do. I did back in Japan. I embroidered family crests on kimonos. My ancestors were embroidering kimonos before this country even existed. It's not very hard. America didn't exi hasn't existed for very long. Wow. A real craftsman. They're a dying breed. Hey, maybe you can embroider my costume sometime. Anyway, like I said, there's not much demand for that kind of thing here. This game does not play take place in Japan in the American localization. It takes place in Japanifornia. I had to take a job working the cash register at a burger joint. Denning to smile. That burger joint would have been better off putting him in the kitchen. Well then, witness, were you were you in the restaurant at the time of the incident? Oh uh, yes, I was eating some seeds over a cup of javachino. Seeds? What do you think these are? Or what do you think these are, huh? I see. So you saw everything that happened, Gramps. Did I? 
Oh, yes. Yes, I did. I saw it all. I'm sorry he's got, like, five different voices, but... Please tell the court. We're all ears. <laughs> Famous home to San Francisco. Yeah. Sure, sure. I'll tell you. I'll tell you every last detail. It's really getting into this. Shibuya Mento? What is that one from? Is that from something else? <laughs> Young man was reading the sports paper. The serving girl brought him a Javachino. She put something in it. The man took one sip of it. it. Looked like he was in terrible pain and then collapsed. That's the servant girl right there in the defendant's chair. I can remember her well. You just made it up. Mr. Kudo? She's not a servant girl. Re please refer to her, her as a waitress. Yeah, you're as bad as the rest of them. All these newfangled words, what's wrong with using the old-fashioned ones, hmm? Newfangled? All this talk of radios and glasses. It's a wireless and spectacles, I tell you. Excuse me? Listen to me, everyone. Don't forget the old values. Don't let the good old days slip away. Well, um, I think it's time to begin the cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Eureka... <laughs> Eureka Bukuro. The man was reading the sports paper. Yep. Took one sip of it. You saw the victim, then. You saw Mr. Glenn Elg. I wanted to know if Gustin Braun retained his championship or not. So he was looking at the sports paper the victim was reading, huh? And at the location in question, there are partitions between tables on the same side of the restaurant, right? So what if there are? If you say that you could see the victim, that means you were sitting at a table on the other side of the restaurant, correct? Ka. Go to that place to drink Javachino. I don't go to sit. I don't remember which table I was sitting at. And you go there to eye the waitress. The serving girl brought him a Javachino, but she put something in it. Mr. Kudo, that is a very grave accusation. Are you sure about what you saw? Kudo never makes mistakes. I dot every T and cross every I. I see. My eyesight's fine. The doctor said I only need spectacles for reading and driving. His eyes are only really fine when he's scoping out a waitress. I saw what the serving girl put in the Javachino as well. But I know it's coming up, but something tells me I'm not gonna like it. Your Honor. We need more clarification on what was put into the victim's coffee. I'd like to ask that the witness add what he knows about this to his testimony. Hmm. I agree. Witness, will you enlighten us, please? Sure, sure. There's no question about it. She very conspicuously put some white powder in there. Did she really put that into the coffee? Doubt me, boy. She took, so, she took some out of a small brown bottle and sprinkled it in. Didn't she have been adding sugar? Sugar? In a small brown bottle like that? Like that, or... How do I do the judge's voice? What the hell? Like that. Witness, could you please describe the bottle in more concrete terms? I completely, like, spaced how to do the judge's voice for a sec there. Huh. <laughs> bottle like this, perhaps? Oh, there it is. There's the one. It's the bottle of potassium cyanide, I presume. So what did the accused put in the, into the coffee? I think 
it's clear, don't you? <sighs> Would, wouldn't the brown bottle have been found on a person? It was. Man took one sip of it. Looked like he was in terrible pain and then collapsed. Tony! He took just one sip? You youngins, you waste everything. Those Jamachinos cost eight dollars. Good old days, we would have drank every last drop, eaten a cup, and then died. <laughs> There's something about the mental image of Kudo getting, like... <laughs> There's something about the mental image of Kudo getting served a poisoned cup of coffee. He, like, it takes one sip of it, realizes that it's poisoned, like throws the whole cup back and just downs it in like two swallows and then proceeds to just crush the, the coffee cup in his hand and eat the pieces as he's dying. <laughs> Congratulations, you earned the title of Baddiest Man to Grace the Courtroom. So it was an immediate death. Well, with potassium cyanide, I suppose that's possible. Oh, yes. He's lumped over without so much as a twitch. I felt the, ja I felt the javachino I just drank turn sour in my stomach. Oh, yes. I know that feeling. And the waitress? I presume she is. That's the serving girl right there in the defendant's chair. I remember her well. Curious. Will reloading. If you reload, you might be able to get rid of the stream delay. You said, I remember her well in reference to the waitress. Did she have any particular features that you can identify her by? He would have been occasionally violently convulsing if he was poisoning- if he was poisoned with cyanide. Particular features? It's a disgrace, that's what it is. Sorry? You can see all the way up to her- her, you know, respect to being naked in that uniform. So, the particular feature you recognize about the waitress is her outfit? But anyone could wear such a uniform, even me. Fan art of Phoenix in the Trey Bien maid outfit. Also, fun fact about the Trey Bien maid outfit that I just remembered. Uh, in, I believe it, it's... Dual Destinies. Athena can actually wear the Trey Bien maid outfit as her alternate costume. Like how, uh... Phoenix can wear the phony Phoenix's... Suit. But I think the Trebian maid outfit is in one is in Dual Destinies, and I think that the uh, the tiger suit is in uh, Spirit of Justice. Mister Wright, please spare the court any further mental anguish from that image. Now nah, I think I think Phoenix would be hot in a maid outfit. Don't get all excited, Nick. You got to keep yourself together. Guess I got a bit carried away. I'm sure that the art exists. Like it has to exist. <laughs> there are other things I recognize about her, too. Seems pretty sure of himself. What should I do? I'm sure you saw a waitress take the coffee over to the victim. Did you actually find... Please tell me that you actually found Phoenix Wright made outfit art and sent it on the Discord. Oh, that's so good! <laughs> I appreciate that so much, Sachi. That's so good. <laughs> Here, give me a sec. I'll pop it up on stream. Just because I absolutely hate when... I hate when, um, streamers reference something that's, like, off to the side. And then don't, like, give any reliable way to find it after the fact in the VOD. Hmm? 
It's just, it's a personal pet peeve of mine. Here it is. <laughs> but anyone could wait could wear such a maid uniform. Even me. What matters is what <laughs> should I have Spoons use that for the thumbnail? What matters is whether or not that waitress was Maggie Bird or not. Quite right. Mr. Kudo, these other features that you recognize about the defendant. I would ask that you add them to your testimony. Sure, sure. There's a ribbon in her hair. Her apron straps were loose. You do seem to remember several details about her appearance. But what about the most crucial detail of all? Her face. Ha! <laughs> As if I wouldn't remember that. Honestly, I actually might take this and I might draw over it. Just to, like, get a version of it without the text box in the way. And to get, like, a higher resolution version of it, I might take that image and draw over it and just tweak it a little bit. New art project coming right up. <laughs> As if I wouldn't remember that. Objection. Witness notice the straps on the accused's apron. It's unlikely to make a mistake about her face. Or he's unlikely to make a mistake about her face. That's right. I can even tell you the color of the, ri of the ribbon in her hair. It was red. You see, there's nothing wrong with the witness's eyesight. Hmm. <laughs> there's no doubt he remembers the waitress pretty well. What should I do? I get the feeling that there's something more to this, somehow. Mr. Kudo, you seem especially interested in straps. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> I'm sorry, I have such... I have such a fucking broken sense of humor. <laughs> what? Ribbon in her hair, the straps on her apron. What's the fascination? Fascination? Objection! <laughs> All kinds of fetishes, Troid. We don't need to embarrass the witness. <laughs> I can't believe Godot really just said, Don't kink shame him, Phoenix. <laughs> God, the timing. The timing on that. <laughs> Listen, you young upstarts. I've got some six strap <laughs> Please, Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, please stop. <laughs> oh, my mind is in the gutter. I'm so sorry. <laughs> is there any relevance to the witness's unusual love of straps, Mr. Wright? <laughs> I was just curious as to why he was so fixated on the waitress's strap. Ugh. There's no fucking way I could take this seriously. Okay. <clears throat> I was just so curious as to why he was fixated on the waitress's straps. And I haven't got a strap fetish. How many times do I have to repeat myself? Very well. Continue with your testimony, Mr. Kudo. Make a strap. Oh. 
Oh. <laughs> I'm dying. <laughs> I need a sec after that. Oh my god. and make it strapless. Do you think old CD really saw Maggie do it? Don't call him that, Maya. Well, he probably had his eye on the waitress the whole time. That's why he was there. But he was there for the cute outfits, right? Not the waitress. I, I guess? Hmm. She makes a good point, though. Hey, did I just say something clever? <clears throat> I wonder if the waitress Mr. Kudo saw really was Maggie. Also, I should full screen my, uh, stream window again. I had to minimize it to get the, uh, this. That's what we have to figure out, Nick. Young man was reading the sports paper. this again, do I get the, uh... Okay, I can't take the other option there. Ribbon in her hair and her apron straps were loose. Paper. The serving girl brought him a javachino, but she put something into it. No question about it, she very conspicuously put some white powder in there. And took one sip of it, looked like he was ter in terrible pain, then collapsed. Apron straps were loose. Part of me wants to throw the apron at this statement, but I don't know what that would accomplish. Let's hit him with a quick confidence save. Oh! Maybe it's not on this. Maybe it's on the uh, previous statement.
discovered by Maggie at the time of the incident has a small pocket with big stains. <clears throat> also, can I just say, these, these stupid lip marks that get on cups are the worst to try to clean. I hate trying to clean these while I'm at my dishwashing job. Contradiction in what's here, currently. Try to present the apron on the side here. I'm gonna reload the safety save, specifically because I don't want to have to uh, keep making confidence saves. <laughs> chair, I remember her well. Ribbon in her hair, and her apron straps were loose. You do seem to remember several details about her appearance. What about the most crucial detail of all? Oh, did we not press this? Her face. Ha! As if I wouldn't remember that. Objection. Witness noticed the straps on the accused's apron. He's unlikely to make a mistake about her face. Oh wait, no, this is the same. Nothing wrong with the, with the witness's eyesight. Hmm. No doubt he remembers the waitress pretty well. What should I do? I get the feeling there's something more to this somehow. The identifying features you described are all things you would see from the back. Oh, okay. Also, that's definitely not Maggie's hair, but... So what? Is it possible that you never saw the waitress from the front at all? Objection! Huh. He's got you there, Gramps. People normally talk about the facial features when they're asked to describe someone. But this witness's testimony is nothing but straps and ribbons. Uh, this is harassment. I tell you, I'm not obsessed with straps or ribbons. I feel... <laughs> This is how, um, the character designer for Kingdom Hearts would react if you put him on the spot and asked about his obsession with belts and zippers. I'm just telling you what I saw. Mr. Kudo, I would request that you add details about any identifying features. Features you observed from the front, that is, to your testimony. Sure, sure. This old man's testimony is getting longer and longer. I can't find a hole in it soon. It'll get even longer, I bet. And big shoes. Well, to be fair, 
as the series has gone on, the shoes has sh have shrunk. They were massive in Kingdom Hearts 1, but they become more and more normal as the timeline goes on. There wasn't anything that caught my interest about her when I saw her from the front. Didn't find anything to be distinct, but you did clearly see the witness's face, yes? This is where I need to present the evidence, because it would have been absolutely covered in shit. No question about it. I didn't come this far to back down now. Victor Kudo never backs down. It's not the answer I was looking for, but okay. This has turned into a matter of pride for old CD now, I guess. I wonder if he really did see Maggie's face or not. I thought, we need some concrete proof on this. Proof that the old guy didn't see the waitress clearly from the front. This is where we need to present the apron. Yeah. Mr. Kudo, I'd like you to please take a look at this. God, this filthy thing would suit filth like you just perfectly. Actually, it reminds me of what my grandson looks like after he's done eating. Have you ever seen this before? Of course I haven't. You think I'd forget something as dirty as that, hmm? Well, you half-witted clot. What? What is it? Ever since I said you half-witted clot, there's been an eerie silence in here. Mr. Kudo, this apron is the apron worn by the defendant on the day of the poisoning. Uh. And as you just said yourself, you wouldn't forget something like this. Which means, if you had really seen this apron before... Yeah. Uh. Yes, you know what I'm getting at. You couldn't have possibly seen the waitress from the front. Oops. Witness, you can't just oops your way out of this. Huh. Well, well. Looks like we finally have a genuine trial on our hands. Listen, Trite. Here are the facts. On the day of the incident, there was only one waitress in the restaurant. That being the, the defendant, Miss Maggie Bird. Oopsie poopsie, he made a fucky wucky. Exactly. When that one waitress put the poison into the coffee cup, this old guy was watching. Hmm. I hope you understand the gravity of the situation, Mr. Kudo. Made of the defendant may rest on what you remember seeing. Just tell the court exactly what you saw, Gramps. You can rely on me, Captain. My noggin's in perfect working order. I can't remember a single occasion when I forgot a, what burger a customer wanted. He can't remember? Probably more like he messed up so many times he's blocking it out. Very well. Let's test just how good your memory and attention to detail is. Mr. Kudo? Tell us what you remember about the victim. Another of those pesky young types, wearing a broken pair of spectacles. He had a newspaper in his right hand, and a noisy brat kept ruffling his pages. The young man was listening to the wireless. I remember that well. The serving girl in question brought over the javachino. The little fidget picked up the cup with his free hand and took a sip. The testimony we have just heard was to test how credible the witness's memory is. It seems to me that he remembers the victim in a great deal of detail. Oh, yes. I hate those you-know-what types who are so vague about everything. How are we gonna handle this, Nick? We only need to do one thing. We just need to prove that the old man's memory is shot. Just trip him up, you mean? Isn't that kind of cruel? I suppose, but it's what I do best. It 
There's another of those pesky young types wearing a broken pair of spectacles. Spectacles? Dark glasses to you. One of the lenses was green, but the other was broken. Fangled rubbish? That's why I remember him so well. He did have some kind of lens over his left eye. I wouldn't have called it a pair of glasses. Hmm. He seems to have been wearing some rather modern-looking shades. Perhaps I should take, in t take to wearing some, and rival Mr. Godot's sharp appearance. We better come up with something sharp and quick. So I'll wait and see if I should challenge him about the spectacles. He had a newspaper in his right hand, and the noisy brat just kept rustling its pages. The newspaper was a sports paper, wasn't it? Yeah, it looks very similar to the uh, scouter from DBZ. The newspaper was a sports paper, wasn't it? Or was it? Hooligan? I nearly ask him, can't you even read without fidgeting? Hmm? I'm supposed to be able to read the back page with all that rustling going on. We needed to find out if Guts and Braun retained his championship title. It's his paper, not yours. I wanted to know so bad, why didn't you buy your own? What are you looking at me like that for? How dare you! How? How? Gina, what's the scouter saying about the price of my NFT? <laughs> Cuts and Braun got beaten yesterday, by the way. Anyway. The young man was listening to the wireless. I remember that well. The wireless? Decadent young rascal. In my day, it was one or the other. Read the paper and listen to the wireless. Oh boy. Using an earpiece? It's selfish, that's what it is. I was straining my ears, but I couldn't catch any of it. Is he that desperate to listen to the radio? What are you looking at me like that for, huh? How dare you feel sorry for me? The serving girl in question brought over the Javachino. You mean the waitress, who you only saw from behind, right? One of those, aren't you? Never let anything go, isn't that right? Maybe. What does it matter if I saw her from the front or from behind? We're not pushing until I've got some hard evidence. The little, the little fidget picked up the cup with his free hand and took a sip. His free hand? Yes. Which hand was that? Were you listening before, Cloth Ears? I said he was rustling the newspaper with his right hand, didn't I? His free hand wasn't his right hand, and which hand was it? Huh. Perhaps the great Mr. Trite has three hands. And wouldn't I like to know? Yeesh. I was only asking. No need to gang up on me and treat me like a freak. The point of this cross-examination is to establish just one thing. That this old guy's memory has more holes than a Swiss. <laughs> Swiss, wow, that's rude. I guess we just need to find a contradiction in his testimony somewhere, huh? Anything will do, even the smallest detail. We just need one mistake and he's ours. <laughs> that's more or less the joke I was going for there. <laughs> Glasses. Yeah, perhaps I should. Uh. Wait, what? Waitress.
Canvas that. Paper in his right hand. The man was listening to the wireless, I remember that well. Wireless. Rascal. Do either or. Straining my ears, but I couldn't catch any of it. Desperate. Um. Check what's on the back of the newspaper. I can't. This isn't. This isn't uh, Apollo Justice on where you can rotate your evidence. If that's actually what it is, that's actually really... That's a really interesting detail. Um, so, over here... He had a newspaper in his right hand. Picked up the cup with his free hand and took a sip. But if he was picking up the cup with his left hand, the mouth mark would have been on the other side of it. Yeah. I like I like that. I like that contradiction. That's actually really cool. Mr. Kudo, do you remember what you were told at the start of this testimony? That this was a way of testing the credibility of your memory. I know, I know. There's nothing wrong with my memory, I tell you. Nothing. Not anything wrong. I'll eat these seeds and sing the pigeon song. Care to tell us where this is going, Troid? According to Mr. Kudo, the victim was holding the paper in his right hand, while drinking coffee with his free hand, which would make that his left. Gah, what's this, kindergarten? But I'd like the court to please take a look at this. That's the cup the victim used, correct? Yes, and on the rim you'll notice a mark left by the victim's lips. Yes, there's a stain left by the coffee. If you consider where that stain is, you're, you'll clearly see that the victim was holding the cup in his right hand. Ow. Well, Mr. Kudo, court's waiting for your epic performance. You said you'd eat those seeds and sing the pigeon song. This is a memed, this is a memed uh, screenshot. Also, can I just say, with some of the stuff that they've shown for uh, Apollo Justice Trilogy, like, they they have, like, a green screen mode where you can fuck around with the character models and make them say shit. And it, <laughs> it, that's a dangerous thing to give to this fandom because you, you've seen the objection.lol stuff, like... <laughs> I'm afraid this is simply not acceptable. I think the witness had better go back to the park where he came from. Wait. You think I'm gonna stand here and listen to you tell me I'm mad? You're wrong. 
I don't care about that dirty coffee cup. I know what I saw. You still insist on your testimony. That young brat was holding the cup in his left hand. Oh yes, no question. I'm a good law-abiding citizen, I am. <clears throat> it's that dead young hotbot, and you, you spiky-haired yahoo. Or, you are all at fault. Who, me? Thank you, old man. I've heard quite enough from you already. Don't call me old man, old man. Been around for 68 years, I have. You can't ignore me. Listen to what I've got to say. I'm sorry, Mr. Kudo, but... Sure. Why not hear a little more? Mr. Kudo! This is my 16th cup of coffee. This is your final stand. Thank you, Captain. Rely on Victor. Why well, was wearing the earpiece on the same side as the green lens of his specs. He kept fiddling with it all the time. He was fiddling with it just before he picked up the cup, too. And then he used the same hand to pick up the cup, his left hand. We know that the victim was wearing an unusual monocle over his left eye. It wasn't a monocle, Your Honor. It was a small computer monitor, often used by programmers. God, could you imagine having text mashed that close to your eyes? Like... The concept would be really cool, but you'd definitely have to... figure out a way how to give it decent depth on it. Otherwise, it would just be very, very difficult to read. A monitor? You mean like a television screen? The inside of the lens is a screen that displays, that displays computer data. It's called an HMD. It's a common tool in the victim's line of work. HDTV, DVD, CD, all these newfangled levers, letters drive me mad, but they don't matter. It already exists, actually. Is it the, is it the stupid Apple goggle things, or are you talking about Google Glass? Because Google Glass is the first thing that comes to mind. Or are you just talking about VR in general, I guess? Neither? <laughs> Gosh, I wonder if I have that... I wonder if I have that, uh... Conversation recorded. I had a conversation with, uh... Spoods and Pine about, um, I think it was during the, uh, bonus episode of Bloodborne that I've never gotten around to editing. Uh, Jimbles was drunk. It's a little projector that you wear as an earpiece and it projects text into your field of view. Interesting. Jimbles was drunk and, uh, I was grinding for blood vials while I was playing Bloodborne. And, um... The conversation went something like, um, someone said something, something HDMI, and I was like, I said, I was delirious at that point, and I said, uh, <laughs> it was, what was it? Never mind, I'll just show the clip eventually. I'll find the clip and upload it, because I still need to sift through that video, actually. Basically, it was a joke about uh, HDMI and STD. I know what I saw, and I'm telling the truth. It's true. He doesn't seem to be lying. Those are the facts. Good old black and white. Well, I was wearing the earpiece on the same side as the green lens of his specs. Um...
So the victim was wearing an HMD. HDTV, CD, DVD, what does it matter? It was none of them, actually, but anyway. And you're sure that he was wearing the earpiece on the same side? No question. I could only see that side of his head from where I was sitting. Yeah, it's pretty obvious if you look at the floor plans. The opposite table, he'd only have a view of the side of the victim's head. He kept fiddling with it all the time. It. Seems you kept an eye on Mr. Glenn Elk. He's getting on my nerves. Rustling that newspaper and fiddling with his earpiece all the time. And then he went and made all the fuss, dying from one sip of Javachino. Wanted to say to him, calm down, you young brat. Looking at it made me suddenly er, made him, he suddenly speed up my seed eating. I could have choked. So I take it the victim was a walking ball of nervous energy. He was filling with it just before he picked up the cup, too. The earpiece you mentioned. Which hand did the victim touch it with? You're one of those people, aren't you? The type that uses your left hand to get things out of your right pocket. It fastens your left cuff with your right hand. Isn't that how you're supposed to do it? When the tour guide says on your right side, you'll see a famous blah blah blah. You're the only one who seems to deliberately look left. Well, aren't you? N no I didn't mean... Obviously, he used the hand on the same side of his body that the earpiece was in. Ow, ow! How? So if he had the HMD on his left side, then it was his left hand, I guess. He used the same hand to pick up the cup, his left hand. Well, Nick, what do you think? think the guy's telling the truth? But even so, something's not quite right. Then chuck evidence at him until he breaks. He's not lying, there wouldn't be any contradictions in his testimony, right? Oh, whoops. Wow, that testimony is significantly shorter than I thought it was. Only four statements. Can I just say, one mechanic that I'm very sad that they didn't backport when the uh, trilogy, when the HD trilogy came out, is uh, I'm really sad because Apollo Justice actually has a little marker above the text box that tells you which piece of testimony you're on. Like, which... Birdseed or Franziska's Whip. Franziska's Whip, 100%. Nope, I need to press this one. He's the same hand to pick up the cup with his left hand. You seem very sure of yourself, Mr. Kudo. That's because I know I, what I saw. No matter what tricks you try to play on me. Looks like he really did see the guy picking up the cup with his left hand. It's a dead end. Yep. My, my idea is that I should throw the prescription bag here. Because he, uh... He blew out one of his eardrums. Objection. Yeah. I will say, that's a bit of a stretch, because it doesn't specify which of his ears he blew out. I'm not sure what the relevance of this is, but... Mr. Kudo. <clears throat> There's something strange, or very strange, about your observations of the victim. What? You say he was wearing the earpiece on the same side as the HMD. No question. You can lock me up if I'm wrong. It was a left ear, without a doubt. I could only see that side of his head from where I was sitting. I don't think so. What did you say? What's that you say? 
You're no doubt unaware of this fact, Mr. Kudo. But the victim couldn't hear with his left ear. His eardrum was ruptured. Eh? Traces of medication for his condition were found in his ear canal. That's right. It's impossible that the victim was wearing his earpiece with his left ear. Because he couldn't even hear in that ear. That's true, Captain. It is. Pigeon! <laughs> Pretty pigeon. Order, order, order. This witness's testimony is completely unreliable. He only saw the waitress from behind. And he claims the victim was wearing an earpiece when we know his eardrum was ruptured. Well, Mr. Godot? Ugh. A single drop of milk is all it takes to destroy the pure black magic in the cup. This old man. It's my drop of milk. Captain, you calling me a drip? No, he's calling you dripless. So the victim's coffee cup in which the potassium cyanide was found. The mark on the rim clearly shows that the victim picked it up with his right hand. I'll never back down. I know I'm right. I'd drink his javachino with his left hand. Let me put you out of your misery. Clearly the victim used both hands. He took a sip with the cup held in his right hand and switched to his left. That's what the old man saw. Objection! Impossible. The witness has already testified on numerous occasions that the victim died immediately after taking just one sip of the coffee. Objection! The chin the victim used to pick up his cup is irrelevant, Your Honor. The facts still stand. With one hand or the other, Mr. Elk drank the poison coffee. Like this. Objection! Sadly, Mr. Godot, that doesn't wash. The point of this testimony was to establish whether the witness's memory is credible. And the results are clear. The testimony given by this witness is useless. Puh. Believe? It's time to conclude today's proceedings. I'm satisfied that the witness is not deceiving the court. To be frank, his testimony is a farce. Did you have to be so frank? Take that, you... I'm sorry, Mr. Kudo, you can't reach me from there. I'm ordering the defense and the prosecution to investigate this case further. That is all for now. This court is adjourned. Hold it. Wait! If we stop now, where does that leave me? Leave you, Mr. Kudo? Thanks to that blue-suited young upstart over there. Just a bumbling old man who can't even dot his T's or cross his eyes now. How is your bad memory my fault? I'm sorry, Mr. Kudo, but there's nothing I can do. I've kept my mouth shut until now. There's something else the court should know. What? There's more? To be perfectly honest, it might not be anything. I want another chance. I want another crack at you, young shark. Me? It's looking at me like I'm some sort of evil shogun. Well, everyone, you say one final showdown. Final chapter in this eccentric old man's scrapbook. Sorry, Gramps. I've already had my 17th cup of coffee. You got to lose, Captain. You'll be all the Javachino you want if you come to my house after the trial. Maybe 68 year olds. 68 years old, but Victor Kudo is still a man. That's enough, witness. I believe I'll, it will be quicker for the court to just hear your testimony. You bet. Much, much quicker. I can't believe this is happening. <laughs> you better get ready, youngster. The picture. Just quit throwing those seeds at me, would you? Gotta be using some sort of infinite ammo code with that box of seeds. First of all, I want to stress that this might be nothing. I'm not too sure of myself. 
The young boy slumped over the table as soon as he took one sip of his Java Chino. Well, the clumsy idiot upset the, upset the vase. Knocked it right over. It broke, and a strip of cloth covering, covering the table got completely soaked. Well, how about that? Turn things upside down, hmm? Um, is that all? Yes, that's all. I remember it perfectly. Eh, you're doubting me again? You're doubting a poor defenseless old man? No, we're not doubting you, Mr. Kudo. Don't you get the feeling there's a question hanging on everyone's lips, Nick? Yeah, so what, probably? That's all I can think of, and I have to cross-examine this guy. But you're a bird brain. That's what, if that, er, that's why all you can, that's why that's all you can think of. Very well, Mr. Wright. Your final cross-examination, please. Don't we literally just have a picture that shows the base upright? Mr. Kudo, this is a photograph of the crime scene. Ha! Huh. So what? Look carefully at the table. The vase is there, intact. Huh? Lost your tongue, Granddad? I'm no granddad of yours, Hopscotch. Enough. Throw any more seeds in this corner and the cleaners will be here all night. Ugh. Is it now? Just remembered something. Yes. Go on. Broken vase. <laughs> it's on my table. What? Uh, well, you see? It startled me when that young lad collapsed. I stood up. It must have been when it fell over. Vase on my table, I mean. Vase on your table? Haha. <laughs> Yes, it was on my table. That's how my groin came to be completely soaked. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Kudo. You've certainly earned kudos for today. I'd like to ask a question now. Oh, yeah. I haven't any use at all. Perhaps that's something you should reflect on yourself, Mr. Kudo. Ugh. Wait, wait a minute. If that's the case, there's more. I've got more to say. <coughs> oh, yes, I remember something. Wait, look. <coughs> Bailiff, oh wow. <clears throat> Bailiff, escort the witness out of the courtroom. Wait, listen to me! <laughs> As he's being dragged away with a trail of seeds falling behind him. Well, we seem to have been considerably sidetracked. I'm still not in a position to deliver a verdict. The defendant has not been positively identified as the waitress in question. Additionally, there are two disparities in the testimony we have heard thus far. Mark on the coffee cup that the victim supposedly drank from with his left hand, and the earpiece which was inserted in, into his left ear, out of which he couldn't hear. Wow, Nick, you did it! I therefore require both the defense and prosecution to further investigate the facts. Yes, Your Honor. There's one more thing before I call today's session to an end. One more thing, Your Honor? What was we just heard from? He's most insistent that his testimony should be of use. So he summarized it accordingly to his state to this statement. Um okay. You may each have a copy of it if you, as you or if you wish. Whatever. 
Prosecution doesn't need props like that. Kato's really mad, huh? Yeah, I would be too. Very well. There you are then, Mr. Wright. There are three copies. My own, yours, and Mr. Kato's. Yes, Your Honor. Sorry. This isn't a piece of testimony, more like a five-year-old's apology. What the heck are we supposed to do with three copies? That is all. Court is adjourned. Wow, that's actually very conveniently timed. It's cutting a little bit short, but this is going to be where I end for tonight. So give me a sec, and we'll find someone to raid. Exclamation point Discord if you want to join the Discord. Exclamation point Socials if you want to uh, check out the VODs channel. Okay. I actually don't know who to raid tonight. Hey, Sachi, you got anyone that's available to raid? Oh wait, we've got Milky's playing Genshin. I'd totally Sin is live? Really? Wow, I totally just missed that in my thing. So yeah, um, thank you all so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. Uh, I should be back with more of this tomorrow. If all things go well. Um. Other than that, I guess. I hope to see you there. Have a good one and take care.